Hello everybody, Johnny here. Let's do some math today. Now, Dewey's been troubled by something lately. He's been thinking a lot about fractions. Fractions seem to trouble a lot of folks. So, let's help Dewey out. Now, the thing that Dewey's concerned about is dividing fractions. Now, dividing whole numbers is one thing, but dividing parts of things and other parts of things Here's an example. If we had three-fourths of something, and we want to know how many halves are in it, it might look like this. Now that's exactly what it means. How many times was, does one half fit into three-fourths? Now close your eyes, think about it for a moment, make a picture. How many halves of something might fit into three-fourths of something? Now that's one way to think about it. Today we're going to be thinking about it with numbers, and I have to tell you, I don't like dividing by fractions. So I'm going to divide by something a lot easier. In fact, I'm going to divide by probably the easiest number of all. Well, one of the easier numbers. So instead of dividing by a fraction, let's see what else we might do. So here's something I do know. I know that if I divide a whole number by a very special number, 1, I always end up with the same number again. Makes me happy. Now, what's nice about this is it works for other numbers, too. So 15 divided by 1, how many 1's are in 15? 15. Okay. So this also works for fractions. And this is going to be a little bit tricky, but it's the same idea. 2 thirds divided by 1 is asking, how many times does 1 fit into 2 thirds? It only fits in 2 thirds of the time. But you can see the pattern. So dividing by 1 is a really great thing. So, how can we make this work for us? I'm dividing by a half, but I'd rather be dividing by one. Let's think about what we might do. Well, if I wanted to, I could change this half into a one, but I had to follow some rules and be fair about it. Now, I know that to turn one half into one, I'd have to double it somehow. Let's do that. Let's take one half and then double it, but I'm going to double it this way. 2 over 1 is the same as 2, and so that can double it as well. So I'm saying 1 half times 2 over 1. And as you've studied multiplication of fractions and other things before, you know that multi multiplying fractions is not much trouble. So 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 times 1 is 2. So now, with all of this, we've gotten the 1 we want. Let's hold on to that, because we like 1 a lot. But I want you to think about this for a moment. This whole process is something special, okay? And your teacher may use this term, so you need to know what it is. In order to get a number to become 1, we use something called its reciprocal. Okay, so that's a big word. Now, the reciprocal of 1 half was 2 over 1. So we know that 1 half times 2 over 1 gave us 1. Now, if I use the 2 thirds, in order to get 2 thirds to equal 1, I have to multiply by 3 halves. Look at the pattern here. This will help you when multiplying and dividing fractions in the future. Okay? A reciprocal is a number necessary that you need to use in order to multiply another number to make 1. So 1 half to become 1 needs to have its reciprocal, 2 over 1. 2 thirds to become 1 needs to use its reciprocal, 3 halves. So I used 1 half's reciprocal here to make the whole number 1. So far, so good. Now, it's all well and good for me to change 1 half into 1, but 3 fourths needs something too. So let's take 3 fourths. And remember, whatever I've done over here in order to keep this problem safe and fair and equal, I have to do the same thing. So if I multiplied 1 half times 2 over 1, I'm going to have to multiply 3 fourths by 2 over 1. So far, so good. So let's think about this for a moment. 3 fourths times 2 over 1 is equal to 3 times 2 is 6, and 4 times 1 is 4. Okay? so. When we get all this together, this gives us 6 fourths. Now we have 6 fourths divided by 1. 
I started with 3 fourths divided by a half, now I have 6 fourths divided by 1. That's what I wanted, because I like dividing by 1. Now here's what's nice about 6 fourths. 6 fourths divided by 1 will give us 6 fourths, which is the same thing as 1 and 2 fourths, or the same as 1 and 1 half. Now here's where it gets interesting, okay? What we're saying now is that 3 fourths divided by 1 half is equal to 1 and a half. Now, how do we know that? Let's ask the question again. How many halves are there in 3 fourths? What we're saying now is that there's 1 and a half halves. Let's try that out. 1 half is a half. A half of a half is a quarter. A half plus a quarter gives us three-fourths. And that's what we started with. So this is a way of looking at dividing fractions using ideas around dividing by one and using reciprocals. Hope this was interesting for you.